Welcome to Gulfstream today and welcome to Gulfstream Park. Ron Nicoletti along with Acacia Courtney. Uh, we're going to start today with a good main track uh, and a firm turf course. But before we get started, I want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day today. And uh, these are the true heroes of the United States. Yes, absolutely. Today we remember and acknowledge those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Thank you for your service. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a, a beautiful day here in South Florida. And uh, we're thinking of all those veterans out there this afternoon. As I mentioned, we started today good main track from turf course had a little bit of rain last night but if it's anything like this in the next half hour ago just watch that sun it's going to be a fast track before you know it because it's a typical uh, sultry day here in <laughs> south florida so uh, uh we'll get let you, you know, throughout the day know if they upgrade that to uh fast now let's go through our wagering menu on this holiday card 11 races we started off in uh, the first race with the early a pick five 50 cent wager and in case you'll have our ticket in just a couple of moments. Race two today is where the first of a rolling super high five start. We got that nice carry over $8,000 and you watch this pool because sometimes they really send it in on here and it's a good wager. With a 11 race card, the Rainbow Six this afternoon will start in race number six and the carryover is starting to bill. It's approaching $150,000 there about. It's going to be over $200,000. You can be sure of that. And then in race number seven, our last five races on the card we will have that late pick five a 50 cent wager so we've taken care of all the business here <laughs> and we're going to delve into today's card and this one one mile and one sixteenth allowance optional claimer Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up twenty five thousand dollars the claiming level scratch the main track only the participant diplomatic affair and as a uh, Scheduled? <laughs> Acacia will show you a ticket. Yes, a $48 ticket to start off in the early pick five today. I went pretty deep in these first couple of races. It just seemed like you could really make a case for a lot of the horses there and uh, just to spread it out pretty evenly. And so because of that, I really tried hard to find a single, and I did in race number four. I singled the three horse, lay it down, and then two deep in the final leg of the early pick five. Yeah, when I was looking uh, today at uh, the selections, everybody in town in the morning line, I had did not use the four who's the morning line favorite uh, on my ticket up there at six to one right now uh, but we both started it with the number three Tiz Jet, and I know you wanted to go back and show you this horse's performance. Yes, I want to go back and go to April 17th, which was the last race for this horse. Uh, ran at the optional claiming $50,000 level, the number seven here, and she ended up uh, shifting kind of uh, late in the gear. She came through on the rail, and uh, you can see her running. It looks like she really doesn't have anywhere to go. It looks like she's not going to really do much of anything, and then she is able to come and just kind of go steadily on through she ends up being beaten by just half a length she she finds that another gear towards the rail just misses as they get to the uh the finish line she finished ahead of a next out winner named reimburse so i thought a pretty key race there she's had a bit of freshening since the april 18th and has a win at this distance yeah i like it for all the reasons and you saw there that's one of the reasons i liked it too looks like she had some uh, final go there and she's dropping today to this twenty five thousand dollar level as you mentioned that was against fifty thousand dollar option claimers so a good spot uh, on the ticket there. Uh, who else did you use? You went with the number six and second. It's uh, La Pantalones mm. Fonts. I did. Uh, this one finished fourth last time out going a mile on the turf, but was beaten just by a length and three quarters and had to go wide the entire trip. Had a wide trip two back, but had a nice victory there. Ended up winning by a nose and I thought that that was a pretty impressive finish from her there from the seven-year-old mare. That she's going to stretch out slightly to the mile and the 16th and coming over from Tampa. And found out that uh, La Pantalones fonts means fancy, fancy pants, pants in French. So uh, <laughs> just like I thought I'd put you out to give you a little bit of a fresh a French <laughs> lesson today. I did go with the number two dad's princess. This one now in the Patrick B. N. Cone barn. So Patrick B. N. Cone back here in South Florida. This is a hundred and seventy thousand dollar daughter of mine, Jeff, making her first start since rallying late. She defeated sixty two thousand five hundred dollar maidens going a mile. It was at Del Mar, it was on their turf course, and it was last 
August. But what I like, this horse has been training well up at Palm Meadows on our Palm Meadows turf course. So I think this horse, excellent trainer with Patrick B. and Cohn, uh, coming back, maybe get a little bit of a price. And currently on the board, you don't get a price if you go by the early wagering at 8 to 5 on the board. <laughs> yeah, still very early in the wagering. Uh, you mentioned the morning line favorite, the number four standard deal, who I used. It looked like this was going to be the speed of the race to me. And I think that that's just pretty key. I mentioned how I thought the first few races were very wide open, and I went four deep here. And I think you can see that we have the <laughs> Same horse on top, but then totally different underneath. Uh, but Standard Deal is coming off about a three-month layoff. First start in the barn of Marcassi, but again, looks to be that speed. Given uh, her past performances and given the way that she's been working, training, coming up to this as well, uh, it looks like she's always been in the action when she's gone a little bit further on the turf. Her last couple of turf starts were sprinting, so she's stretching out again, and I think that that might be beneficial. Well, you see, I use the red, white, and blue angle here, <laughs> one, two, and three. So uh, still <laughs> keeping the patriotic uh, angle going here. And Melody Croon is back in South Florida, back at a proper level after shipping up to Pimico to run a late closing eight. Beaten only three and a half lengths in that race, and I happened to beat him. Watch this race. wasn't a bad performance, and that was in the $100,000 hilltop. So another horse here, and you were absolutely right by putting a bunch of horses <laughs> in this first leg because, as you can see, it's wide open, but I got the red, white, and blue. Race number two on the turf. We mentioned the turf course is firm this afternoon. One mile maiden claimer three and up. $50,000 down to $40,000, the claiming level. And we both started it off in here with the number eight horse, and that is Vigas. Yes, this one, another one that's been working really nicely. Seems to have some speed from the outside as well. Elvis Trujillo will be aboard, and I imagine he'll probably hustle this horse so he gets a little bit more out towards the front uh, for the mile on the turf. Last two races were a mile and 16th on the turf after stretching out from running a few seven and a half furlongs. And those were pretty solid third place finishes uh, on the outside. But just looking at how it looks like this race might set up, I think may be able to get away to the front and run away with yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you with that, with number eight, Vigas. And now in second, I have the seven. You have it in third, and that is Royal Sniper. Now a gelding is dropping to this $50,000 level, shortening up to this one-mile distance after failing to hit the board against a really solid group of maiden special weight competition. That was going nine furlongs. Mark Cassie's the trainer. Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. And I know you have a stat on Mark Cassie yes. uh, when he does what he's doing today. Yes, for the past five years with moving maiden in special weight, two maiden claiming on the turf, nine for 40, so 23% win, but 20 out of 40, 50% in the money with a dollar 50 ROI, and that's not too not too surprising. Mark Cassie's horses are usually pretty bet down, but 50% of the time in the money, and you can see very clearly 20 out of 40 there. This horse is also a first time gelding with that drop and uh, with the the company that he's kept in the past. I think all of those things together. Well, the horse that you have in second, I have in third. We got a, a final <laughs> two flip flop exclusive lake. Yes, this one debuted in Special Weight Company, then dropped into maiden claiming for 50000 this level last time out, and also moved over to the turf. It looked like all of those changes really seemed to be the beneficial one for this horse, and that's where he feels the most comfortable. Finished third last time out. Senor Casanova was the winner of that race, and uh, we've seen him run pretty well. And I, and I thought that that was a pretty decent performance, and this horse showed some nice closing ability. Yeah, trained by Mike Gates and ridden today by Jose Alvarez, who was in the saddle last time and back aboard. Let's go to race number three. Six furlongs, maiden claiming three-year-olds and up $10,000. Uh, six runners in the field, one jockey change on the number two. Make the Raya, rider, excuse me, Lionel Reyes. And I went with the number five horse in here, Cats Warrior. You went with the three who I have on the ticket, and that's Morenazzo. Yes, we're all jumbled up in, in this one, but pretty much in agreement of the same three horses. Morinazzo is one of the two Antonio Sano trainees in here. The other is Templar of Glory, who had uh, his first start last time out, so second starter here today. But Morinazzo, I think, uh, really just found his stride last time out. 0 for 8 so far with two thirds, but one of those thirds was the most recent one. Had a sloppy track, two back, and ended up, ended up finishing pretty well last time out and was definitely the best 
best of the rest of the field and has some nice works coming into today on May 14th. Went three furlongs and 35 flat. Well, I did go with the five of you. I've been second on top, and you're right. We got our, uh, you know, trifecta <laughs> uh, sort of boxed around. Cats Warrior dropping a notch today, turning back to three quarters of a mile after finishing a distant third uh, by a much the best winner that day called Power Heat. That was a 12-5 maiden test going six and a half furlongs. And I just thought off that performance, nobody was catching Power Heat that afternoon. So I thought maybe Cats Warrior was the one to beat. But I'm in agreement with you. I think you got to box these horses around. And we both used the number four, and that is Limehouse Gas. Yes, this one in the first start of in the barn of Jacob uh, Molina. And this one uh, finished second last time out, beaten just by four and a quarter over at Tampa. Three starts at Tampa so far. Showed a little bit more speed last time out and seems to be finding his stride as well. Yeah, and ridden today by Eduardo Nunes. And boy, he's been really yes. hot this last <laughs> few days. So uh, Eduardo Nunes, a journeyman, a good guy, and been riding in good form here. Let's go to race yeah. number four. One mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Claim is three and up. $20,000. Scratch the main track only. Number seven, Chip Stowe. And uh, we both, oh yes, we did. We <laughs> both started in here with the number three. Lay it down and lay it down. Move to the Tammy Levy Bond via the claim. Stepping up to the $20,000 level after, I thought, a consistent turf campaign against the notched comper. Tougher, excuse me, which uh, he's never been out of the money in five races this year. He's always run well, you know. Yeah. He's got that one win, three seconds, and a third. I think the obvious concern is the fact sometimes he likes to finish second. Absolutely, and I ended up singling this horse on my early pick five ticket and trying to keep it affordable, trying to find that single, and it just looked like this was really the one to be on paper and looking at his past performances. Yes, there is that, that concern that he does like to finish second, but does have just a lot of consistent performances. You mentioned never been in the money, uh, never been out of the money this past year, but has also burned a bit of money finishing second the last two starts, going off as the favorite. It. But I, I figured I had to give him another try and, and thought this, again, this looks to be the one to beat. Well, number six, Vedalago moved to the Peter World of Bonvita to claim stretching out to a mile in the 16th. And we want to go back. I know you had a spotlight on this horse. You want to show a stretch run uh, just missing last time. Yes, this was back on April 28th before being claimed. He's the number eight horse here. He was sitting a really good trip, and he ended up uh, surging through the stretch. You see it once the video starts moving. He ended up missing just by a head behind next out winner fan base who's uh, been a very solid consistent horse and you see Vetalago there is uh, more towards the middle of the track he's a little bit wide it looks like he's not going to be able to make it again he surges finally puts in a, a big performance there and just misses as they get down to the wire it really was a tight photo there behind fan base who, who as I said is a pretty well proven horse and a next out winner and we got to stand on Peter Walde here on this horse and that is Vetalago Peter Walde over the last five years first on after claim mid-level claim is on the turf three for 23 13 percent 30 percent in the money uh not a very good roi a dollar 13 it's uh, uh peter walder excellent excellent trainer does most of his work uh, uh you know on the main track but he has some angles with the turf that he can run well that's not to say this horse can't win in this spot today just wanted to show you that stat now the horse you had in second i had in third i believe is the four starship zorro who moved to the sappy joseph jr bond yes and moved to the Safi Joseph Jr. barn off of the claim. Also stretch, stretching out in distance again. Uh, had a nice win, won by a length and a quarter last time out at seven and a half furlongs. So stretching out, uh, has run this distance before, does have wins at this distance and some really nice works on the tab, which was good for me too, especially when you have a barn change. When a horse is working consistently like that coming into a race, I think that's always a positive sign. Yeah, and uh, I like saying his name. That's why I said it so slowly. <laughs> Safi Joseph Jr., I have fun saying that. Fifth race this <laughs> afternoon. Six furlongs claimers. Phillies and mares. Three and up. $6,250. We have a clean slate in here with no scratches or jockey changes <laughs> to report in here. And both of us, and I think most everybody's going to have or think of having the number three <laughs> twinkling time on top of, top of their ticket. Yes, it's hard to ignore twinkling time. Uh, added the blinkers back on last time and finished second beaten, but just by two and a quarter lengths. Another thing is that she's beaten several of the other horses in this field, including some of the other horses that we have on our tickets that might be taking money just all over the place. And she's been just tried and tested uh, four for 23, this five-year-old mayor. Uh, 
three starts back with the last time that she won, and she won by half a length over Samus and Yasta. Yeah, after the three, we both go different ways totally <laughs> in here. I went with the eight and second on 24 carat, is debuting locally after ending his 10 race campaign up at Tampa with back-to-back -back victories. The big concern I had about this horse, he's zero for 13 win record at this distance. 13 races, no wins, but four seconds, two thirds. So I'm keying off that consistency at Tampa. See how it translates here to Gulfstream Park. Uh, maybe not on the top of your ticket, but somewhere you put on a pretty square price of yeah. five to one. Oh, I totally agree with that. I actually cir circled this horse, mm. and it looked like he bounces, or she bounces back and forth with the distance, went a mile, then six and a half, mm. then a mile, then seven. So uh, going from root to sprint back and forth, but that was a big concern for me, 0 for 13 at right. the distance. Then you went with the one in second, the Samu, and uh, that went on the board. That second choice, actually, at three yes, to one. Yes, and a horse that's been very, very popular at the claim <laughs> box, and often claimed back by some of the ca the same connections. Now this will be the second star in the barn of Oscar Gonzalez. Went a mile last time, first off the claim, and didn't run well at all. Cutting back to a distance now that he seems to feel most comfortable. I threw a 20 to one shot in third, and that is Palm <laughs> Palm Power stretching out slightly after shipping in from Tampa. Uh, broke a step slow in that race, and he rallied along. The inside he finished fourth against uh, 6,250 claimers going five and a half furlongs so getting a little more distance I think if he breaks out of the gate uh, you know he wasn't running badly through the stretch and maybe a long shot in here uh, comes up I think it's a wide open affair after the number three <laughs> horse in there now the other horse that you used was the six horse Ya Esta yes Ya Esta one that finished behind Samus and Twinkling Time I mentioned that race a few back and uh, this one last time out ended up being beaten by 21 lengths <laughs> didn't do any running at all back on May 1st and was claimed and she's now over in the Aubrey Mirage barn another one that's pretty popular at the claim box but does have some, some consistent runs at this distance and with this kind of company well we're going to take a short break right now when we come back we will talk about the rainbow six and as we mentioned got over a hundred about 150,000 in the pool but it's going to skyrocket from there we'll be back in just a couple of moments And as uh, some guy says each and every day here in South Florida, it is now Rainbow Six time, <laughs> and it is the sixth race, one mile on the turf starter, <laughs> optional claimer, three-year-olds and up, $25,000. Great race to start the Rainbow Six. You got a full field of nine runners, pretty nice horses in here. Quickly, we'll show you my ticket, and you'll see that I did go three deep in here, then two, two, four in the ninth race. I got my long shot today in there, and then set a two and then three fifty seven dollars and sixty cents and i think it'll be well over two hundred thousand dollars as i say now i'm interested to see uh, what horses you picked we don't see our selections when <laughs> we come on the air i went with the number five fleming i don't know how you went i did too uh, we have our our same exacta here and then switched it up on the bottom end but i went with the number five fleming on top michelle nihe the trainer and this horse really looks to be the speed uh two starts back ran at the $50,000 optional claiming level, then dropped last time out, showed a lot of early speed, and, and just was caught at the wire, was beaten by just a neck behind telling Tony, but a really impressive performance from him there, going a mile on the turf, and I think he can continue with that kind of momentum. And, and if you go back and look at this horse's past performance, you'll see a, another victory by coming from off the pace, not right. far off the pace. So this one has that tactical ability. If someone goes up and really sets a suicide pace, this one can sit right off that. So I like the versus and I like the fact that we both have the number five Fleming on top of our ticket. Then we got the number two McFly in there, and McFly has been a major player uh, since returning from the layoff <laughs> and moving to the turf. Absolutely. Uh, the last three starts on the turf, if you look at those, it's been a win, then when stretched out to the mile, was beaten by six and a quarter lengths, cut back to the spring, so the, to the sprint, and won by three and a half. Stretching out again today, so there is that little bit of concern there, but has definitely been a major player. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the stretch out to the distance is, of course, a question mark, but I think that it's one that you can't discredit, especially given uh, his ability to show some early speed and the connections as yeah, well. Yeah, and I, I thought his performance on... Um, 
uh, March 26th when he was a respectable sixth at a $35,000 option claimer. A couple of horses came out of that race to win again. So coming out of a key race on McFly, uh, I think you got to have somewhere on your ticket. Now, you did go with the number three horse in here, Hadron, in your third spot. I did. First off, the claim moving over into the barn of Peter Walder and also adding blinkers. And we have a stat for you on that very thing, uh, what Peter Walder is doing here. First off, the claim with the blinkers. A pretty small sample size, but four for eight, 50 percent win and six for eight, 75 percent <laughs> in the money. So a 372 <laughs> ROI. And we talked about uh, Peter Walder's horses <laughs> being bet down and uh, the kind of ROI that you mentioned before. And this was just absolutely huge. And like I said, it's a small sample size, but a lot of success with this kind of move. So the move is on the turf with the blinkers. You see it right there. So a great uh, stat there. You see, uh, like you said, limited stat, but a very good one. I went with the eight-star Charlie, who can turn out to be a major part of the pace puzzle when stretching out to a mile today. After a couple of sharp shrimp, a uh, shrimp, sprint <laughs> outings at $35,000.11, which includes that maiden breaker last time out. So star Charlie stretching out around two turns after a couple of good performances sprinting. So one of the horses I did put on my Rainbow Six ticket. Now we will go to race number seven this afternoon. Five furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is three-year-olds and up. $12,500. In case I know you have your late pick five ticket. I do indeed. This one is $48 as well. I wasn't able to find a single in the second half of the card today, but race is seven through 11. I went two deep, two deep, four deep in race nine. I thought that that one was pretty wide open, two and three. So I spread it pretty evenly, uh, but no singles here, but still kept it affordable. Yeah, affordable. And I'm glad you have one of the two horses <laughs> I have on my ticket on here. Actually, I got both your horses on my okay. ticket. Uh, we both started it off with the number five shape of my heart has been knocking on the door in four consecutive turf races at this level and distance. And, and I think looks have found the spot where you can notch that elusive maiden victory. Uh, Martin Mar Ramirez uh, rides uh, this uh, this horse that I think's got, you know, is in the logical choice. Seven to five, I believe, on the morning line in there. Yes, seven to five on the morning line. 0 for 11 so far. So, of course, that's one of the downsides. Um, but this horse, as you said, been knocking on the door. It looks like he might finally be due. And this might be the spot to get that victory. And I know you have the number four, El Shaddadi in second and this one's going to wear blinkers again i do the last two starts were without blinkers uh, the, the last uh, couple of starts last one cut back down to the five furlongs on the turf again so going to continue off at that distance does have some runs with blinkers before uh, but i think the addition of the blinkers and the fact that he has the ability to show some early speed Putting the blinkers back on might sharpen him up a little bit and be a little bit more invested in the action. Well, the other horse I used on my ticket, and I have been second, actually, is the two. It's my Valentino. This one's hoping for a clean trip after him counting some early trouble. He got steady when finishing sixth at this level and distance. So trainer Margaret Weatherington has been really busy in the claim box. She's had a yeah. couple of wins over the last uh, couple of days. She had second time Lasix and apprentice John Cruz for this assignment. And I just thought this horse, uh, you know, I went back and looked, and it didn't wasn't that big of, you know, a problem last time out, but I just think there's some upside with this horse. I don't know what is the fourth choice on the morning line. So a horse you might want to think of adding to your, either your Rainbow Six or your late pick five ticket. Then you also went to the outside with number nine, Awesome Trom. I did. This one has been steadily improving since about coming off about a year layoff. Uh, came back in April of 2016, tried the dirt sprinting and was beaten by 24 lengths. Then uh, went to five furlongs on the turf, seven and a half on the turf last time. And I think the last two races have been a steady improvement coming off of that layoff. So I think you cross out the dirt race and then you look just to the turf races and see how he's been steadily improving. And you count that as like a third off the layoff type thing and getting back into the motion of running again and David Fox the trainer Tyler Gaffleone is going to be aboard well let's go to race number eight this afternoon six and a half furlongs made and claim is three and up sixteen thousand dollars we do have one scratch in here of the number four Gus International not many scratches this afternoon so uh, how did you see race number eight well, I ended up going with the same three horses that you did, but I took the first time starter on top, Blade Smith, who's debuting with Lasix for Ralph Nix and Tyler Gaffleone aboard. Uh, been working really solidly coming through. We know how well that Ralph Nix does with first time starters. Well, let's show you uh, a stat that we have on Ralph Nix. Uh, five years, first time starters. These are made and claimers on the dirt. Five for 29, that's 17%, uh, 55% in the money, and just about an even ROI. So there is reason to believe that his horses run very well. Of course, he does 
incredible work with his two-year-old first-time mm -hmm. starters made in special way, but this is a pretty good stat there. So uh, uh, I can understand you having that horse on top of the ticket. I did go with the eight horse, one million, who's now a gelding, moved to the South Santoro Bon V. The claim makes his first start uh, since splitting a pair of next out winners here mm -hmm. uh, when he was second at this level of distance, but it was on December 20th, and the gelding is trained consistently for the return. MSC El Jaramillo in the saddle, but you're always dealing with a horse that's, uh, you know, not run since December 20th. Certainly, and if you look at the work tab, then there's absolutely nothing to knock there. And as you said, split a pair of next out winners. Uh, the horse that ended up winning won the next race by eight, and mm -hmm. the horse that he finished uh, in between, so the one that was in third, Arco de Triunfo, won the next one by seven. <laughs> so some pretty good horses there uh, that came back to win next time out, and it looks like one million is trying to do the same thing. <laughs> well, number seven, Hard Knock, I know you had in second, is dropping to this level today. Yes, dropping to this level, some really good works as well, and I'll also moving back over to the dirt after trying the turf last time out, I thought that the debut on the dirt was a little bit more impressive as well. Terry Pompey, the trainer, Elvis Trujillo will be in the saddle. Well, Let's go to race number nine, a five furlong turf event. It's an allowance. Optional claimer, three year olds and up $25,000. Uh, scratch both main track only. Is number 10, Treve, and number 11, Prague. And uh, we have a pretty nice field here. Nine runners in it, and uh, a number one, Super See Me. Uh, we'll see uh, how you, how'd you do. You, oh, you didn't go to one. I'll start with the one. Then. <laughs> I don't remember we had the same pick. We really do not know who we picked until we no. look at it. This one, a seven time winner, moved to the uh, hot Steve Glaceris Bond. They've been doing good over the last couple of days. Stepping up the competition today uh, after this horse tracked the pace. He edged away. He defeated 10 claimers at this distance, and that was his uh, third victory from seven starts this year. So seven races, three starts, and two-thirds. Going with the hot barn. Going with a horse that knows its way to the winner's circle. So I threw that one on top of my ticket and is actually the morning line favorite. Yeah, I used this horse in my late pick five ticket, but there is a lot of speed in this race. Super See Me is certainly going to be one of those horses that's going to try to get out to the front. The six who I used on top pay any price is another one of those. And this horse uh, was first time in the Angel Rodriguez barn last time out and ended up winning by three lengths. That was two victories in a row. Two victories off of about a 20 mon 21 month layoff. A huge layoff coming back to win twice I think is very impressive. Now there is the question mark of course does pay any price now bounce off of those two big efforts. But it looks like he's been able to keep that momentum going so far which is why I ended up taking him again. And I, I tried to find horses that looked like they might be able to sustain the speed that they've been showing and um, pay any price as a win on both turf and dirt off that layout. Yeah, I use that horse on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned. That next horse I used in here is the five Motown Rhythm, a $60,000 son of Uncle Mo, who's back in South Florida. But let's take a trip up to Tampa Bay <laughs> and show you this horse's last performance. I thought it was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, he uh, draws away in the stretch. You'll see him here, Motown Rhythm. He's the number eight horse, and he just cruises away. And this afternoon, he is three to five. So, uh, you know, a very, very good performance last time out. And what I liked about this horse, you know, they thought enough of this horse before this race and shipping him up to Tampa. They actually had him in the stake. They had him in the $60,000 Fisher Island. So I just thought this horse was impressive. I wanted to go back and show people that might not have seen this race up mm -hmm. at Tampa Bay. I think he's a logical choice in there. And I like the fact, I love the fact that he's 10 to one on the morning line. So we'll see how that works out. Now, who else did you use? Yeah, you'll get a good price on him there. I went with the number four crazy bull who I had mentioned that there is a lot of speed in this race. So I looked for a horse that might be able to act as a bit of a closer. Uh, last time out Motown Rhythm did show uh, some early speed but does have some versatility and tactical speed as well. Crazy bull to me looked like he was going to be um, the closer of this field. Now coming as a first time gelding, a another one that they thought enough of to put in a stake. He's coming out of the Little Magician. He's had about three months off, but he is coming back as a fresh gelding. His last win it came at a mile on the turf, and he just really looked to be the one to me who to, to stand out that might be able to sit off of the pace with what promises to be, in my mind, a pretty hot one. And you also used the Ranger in Paradise, who comes from the same connections as Pay Any Price. I did. This one coming off of about an 11 month layoff. Last ran on June 26th, and that was a win by nearly 10 lengths. So has that layoff, but has been working really well and consistently coming in. Well, let's go to race number 10 this afternoon, and this is a six furlong sprint. Claimers, a three and up. Non winners of two races in life for three year olds. 
30000 down to $20,000. And uh, I went with the number six horse in here, and that's Ikatiro, I believe, is debuting locally for trainer Efren Loza Jr. after a couple of strong sprint performances at Tampa, in which he defeated $25,000 maidens in his career debut, won that race by eight lads. <laughs> and then he came right back to run a troubled second. He got bumped after the start uh, in that race as the odds-on choice, and that was against $35,000 optional claimers on February 27th. So he's my top choice in the race there. I know you had a flip-flop here. You had the number seven, Nicanelli. I did. Nicanelli is adding blinkers now. Finished uh, fourth last time out off of about a seven-month layoff. Ran in September in a stake and finished very solidly. Stakes placed in, in two Florida Sire stakes, uh, third in both of those. Broke his maiden by nine and three-quarter lengths back in 2014. But there are some gaps in the form for sure. But I think the addition of blinkers and that solid race off of the layoff now he has that under his belt and be able to come back big off of that yeah his back class has got to be respected in that spot and i went too deep in there you know this the number yeah. six is my best bet of the afternoon but i couldn't i couldn't single him just for yeah. all the reasons you mentioned want to go back and show you the third horse that i picked was the two bocati and uh this one i just want to show you the stretch run because a bunch of the horses that are in that <laughs> race are in this race today like bluegrass luck who actually gets disqualified in here and bocati the one horse this day and he gets like shuffled back in the, in, the, in the backstage. I just wanted to show you this. You know, he comes over on him, and I just thought, of course, all these thrusts. Now, Blue Glass Luck made a big, huge move to make this thing. He drifted in a little bit in the stretch, and... I don't know how bad it was, you know, I mean, I, but he got disqualified. So just wanted to go back and show you that performance of those horses last time out. You, you did use the number four, Mr. Kisses. Yes, Mr. Kisses was in that race as well. And uh, you yeah, took one horse right. out of the race and I took another <laughs> horse right. out of that race. I guess one one of the ones that we figured got the worst of it there. Right. The reason that I went with Mr. Kisses is because it really looked to me like you can just put a line through each and every one of his yeah. bad races. You can go through and say, well, last time he actually ended up being placed first through disqualification so he had that bumping around uh, you, you can cross off the stake maybe he wasn't ready to do that you can cross out cross off the ones on the sloppy track he obviously wasn't happy doing that uh, cross off the one on the turf that leaves you with a win and a second place finish and, and, and then a second with the disqualification to get the win so I think you can put a line through those and ended up going with Mr. Kisses. Sorry I was going to say an empty pen empty cross it all. Yes the exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well let's race number 10 let's end the day with race number 11 and end a fantastic weekend here, Memorial Day weekend. One mile on the turf, maiden claim is three and up, $12,500. Scratch the five, jockey on the six is Alex Gonzalez, and we both have the three horse, two vient. Yes, two Vien, this means uh, everything comes for continuing our translation lesson today. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, stepping up in distance. Two races at five furlongs on the turf so far. The comment last time in his most recent race was that he exchanged bumps at the top of the stretch. And I watched that video. I don't think he really bumped around that much there. Uh, but he was only beaten by two and a quarter lengths. Maybe had to be shuffled back a little bit and wasn't able to do uh, the kind of running that he was hoping. Finished behind and next out winner can see kid. But I thought that the two impressive performance is sprinting get a little bit more distance today yeah and you know this horse here is stretching out today and i think he can be the controlling speed from his inside starting position it's not the inside rail but it is post three and i just think he controls the pace with the stretch out this afternoon the horse i you well, we got a, almost the same horses mm -hmm. here i'll go with the four lemon royal who's stretching out to a mile after checking on the first turn still managing to finish third at this level uh, against this same level it was going seven and a half furlongs uh you know he's the one that i think will be poised to pick up the pieces if the, the top horse that we both use fails to negotiate uh, that distance. So we'll see how that works I out. I agree with you there. I think mm. pick up the pieces is the perfect way to mm. phrase it. Finished third last time out at seven and a half on the turf. Uh, does have a couple of runs uh, stretching out and going longer on the turf as well. And then I used the number eight, Judas Novel, in second. You used this horse in second, uh, in third, excuse me. And this is the only horse in this field who whose last start was at a, a root distance on the turf. Went a mile and a sixteen last time out now moving over into the Luis Luna barn was beaten only by two lengths last time after gaining steadily yeah and that was his first ever race on the grass mm -hmm. and you know as you mentioned going to root of ground so uh, certainly number eight Judith's novel uh, can be on the ticket and I and those three horses in the last uh, race uh, seem to be the logical three in there uh, we'll see how this uh, day plays out once again don't forget the main track is good the turf course listed as firm beautiful day in South Florida and once again a happy Memorial Day to uh, everybody 
everybody out there and uh, big thumbs up for all those veterans. Absolutely. Thank you again for your service and enjoy your day. What do I love about horse